Hello, beautiful people. This is Dr. Lisa Menus with Atlanta Scaler and with Channeling Eric. Story time. My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven. We're continuing with the chapter more about what heaven's like. There aren't any hospitals here because we really don't need medical care. Instead, we have healing centers. That's where energy is mended. It's pretty much designed for people who've crossed over in a traumatic way like him, um, and need some extra care as they transition. Remember my spiritual, spiritual car wash? That happened in one of those healing centers. We don't have um, paved streets like on earth either. It's not like we have to get, a, get into our Volvo and drive to the neighbor's house or to the gym. We just think of where we want to go and poof, we're there. Just like when I first had, had first died and thought about getting outside, going outside with my body as the paramedics wheeled me outside and suddenly I was there. We do have paths, like well-worn ones I saw when I was exploring heaven for the first time. But they're more for our visual pleasure than to get us places. They're placed around the gathering spots like the libraries and other buildings, but they're also in the garden areas. Here in heaven, there are different areas where spirits hang out other than cities. Remember what I mentioned about how it, if a bunch of spirits uh, all like the concept of a park, they could manifest it collectively and it, would stay, and it would stay in place as long as they continue to think its existence? So there are these locations, I guess you can call them, manifested spaces, because those are the closer, uh, closest words I can think of that have been created by thousands of energetic beings who are fully aware of that space on a permanent basis. They don't exist permanently in the way that buildings and houses on Earth do. I'll explain, I'll explain it this way. On Earth, every time a human goes into a living room, they know how the couch is uh, arranged, how the pillows are, uh, sit on it, and they're permanently st static until you physically move them. But here, if there are five different spirits, and each of them wants the couch they've created to be in a different locations, it can shift and relocate to five different places. There are as many different scenarios as there are spirits who create it. That's interesting. The color of the couch might soften or brighten and then become mute, more muted. The pillows might become firmer and then softer. The plant on the side table might be bigger and then smaller. Sometimes these can all happen simultaneously. Here, that room has a life in and of itself that's constantly being tweaked. That's so cool. On Earth, humans would have would describe the room as inanimate and fixed in time and space. Well, in heaven, things are never that way. Everything here is as alive as the spirits who create them. I find it really intriguing to visit buildings like a library or a lecture hall with a certain architecture that I helped design, only to find that every time I go in, something's been reworked or is transforming before my very eyes. The music here also doesn't come close to what I have, what I was used to in my human life. It's like surround sound, and the way it's make, made is freaking amazing. Different beings create their own specific sound, and they do it according to the frequency they vibrate at. If you think of it in terms of an orchestra on Earth, a group of one type of being might vibrate in a way that sounds like the horn section. Another group might vibrate to a sound that's like the string section. And another group might do the same for the percussion section. There are other sections, and other, uh, other ones have uh, has more musical sounds. Wait. There are other sections, and each one has more musical sounds than I've ever heard on Earth. It's, you guessed it, hard to describe. But the real cool shit about the music here is that it tunes our energetic bodies. It tunes the soul and it touches right uh, at the very core of it, like a, vibrate, a vibrating tuning fork inside you. It does the same thing to humans. You've ever got the shivers or cry because of mu music? That's what I'm talking about. But it's not immediate or as intense as, as it is here. I like to go to music concerts here. As for my personal musical stuff, I do play my guitar. It was really good. That's why I made sure to manifest a couple of them in my Earth-like home, 
a Les Paul, and a Fender Stratocaster. I've always been connected to music, but I like more uh, types of music now. Each type balances certain energetic patterns, which are really expressions of different emotions. On Earth, I like music like Rush and ACDC because it channeled my anger and other negative emotions. But in Heaven, I like all kinds of music, even Inya-esque type. Laugh at me if you want, but that shit's great. And the other cool thing with music here is I can smell, hear, duh, see, touch, and taste it all together. In Heaven, all your senses meld together, and that makes everything more intense, but not in a bad way. It's one of my favorite things about being here. Things that would have been super overwhelming on Earth are just commonplace, and I never feel like it's too much to take in or handle. As a spirit, I'm uh, built to receive all the sights, sounds, tastes, smells, textures that heaven, earth, and infinite other dimensions have to offer, and it's never going to get old. All right, and hope you enjoyed. Say your prayers before you go to sleep. This is Elisa Matthews. Bye.